All right, awesome. Uh, good evening, everybody. Good evening. I hope you guys are well. I hope you guys are winning. I hope you guys are blessed. So we just want to get into a time, you know, as we as we, as we get into day two um, of uh, of a week of gratitude. We just we just want to get into a time of praise and thanksgiving. Just you know, thanking God for for who He is really, and 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 for what He continues to do for us on a daily. Now, a scripture. Uh, just as we get into prayer, scripture has just dropped into my heart like, literally a few minutes before we started. Um, Psalm 68, verse 19. Um, and it reads, Blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits, even the God of our salvation. Um, and 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 really, I think for me, uh, this is the, the, this is really something that's important to remember, even as we are thanking God that, you know, daily he continues to give us things to be thankful for. Daily he continues to bless us. Daily he continues to remain faithful in our lives. Um, and then and, and, and another scripture says that even when we are not faithful, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself, right? And so we just want to get into a time where we, where we really just thank God for who he is, for what he continues to do for us on a day. Daily. So I just invite you to just unmute your mics, to just uh, unmute your videos and just join us in a time of prayer as we thank God. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you, oh God. We thank, thank you, you that you are good, your mercy is good. Your goodness, God. Father God. Heavenly Father, you, you are you good and your mercy is enjoyable. Oh, God. she we can honor you, Father God. We bless you, Lord. We exalt you, Heavenly Father God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. We praise you, O God. We exalt you, and we thank you, Father. We We exalt you, and lift 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 you, be glorified oh God, magnified in this place oh God. Oh, Saints, just as you join, I just invite you to unmute your mics, to unmute your videos, and let me pray and exalt the name of God. Thank you, Lord. 
We thank you for who you are, Almighty God. We thank you that you're the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the author and the perfecter of our faith, Almighty God. We pray that you may increase in this place even as we decrease, Almighty God. We pray that you may speak to us, Almighty God. You may speak to us concerning um, the area of gratitude, Heavenly Father. Minister to our hearts, Almighty God, this evening. I pray, Heavenly Father, for each and every person that is here, that is joining us this evening, oh God. I pray that you may meet each and every one of us at our point of need this evening, Almighty God. I pray that those that need a touch may they receive a touch from you this evening. Those that need a word, oh God, I pray that they may receive that word this evening. Those that, that need confirmation, oh God, I pray that they may receive confirma confirmation, oh God, whatever it is that we may need. We know, almighty oh God, that it is, it is available in you. So, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I glorify your name and I say that you, and I ask that you have your way with us this evening, oh God. Have your way with us, almighty oh God, and continue to be Lord of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Welcome, welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for being with us. It's so lovely to see each and every one of you. Well, not really see you guys, but uh, hopefully uh, at some point during the meeting, I, you know, we get to see each and every one of you. But welcome, guys. Welcome to day two um, of a week of gratitude, where we just dedicate this time to to just really give gratitude to God, give thanksgiving to God, give praises to God, and learn you know, about gratitude, because we believe that um, an attitude of gratitude really gets us to that place where we are at one with God. So this evening, before we start, I'm just going to, to encourage us, you know, so um, I know at times we, we, we may be in different seasons, right, of our lives, and at times it may look like, and it may feel like uh, we don't have anything to be grateful for, right? But I just want us to think, just as I'm introducing our speaker for tonight, 
um, just to type in the chat box something, one thing, at least one thing that you're grateful to God for this evening, at least one thing, whether it can be life, it can be just, uh, you know, thanking God that you're alive here this evening, thanking God that you've got food to eat, thank you, thanking God that you've got clothes on your back, whatever it is that, you, uh, that you're thankful to God for, please just type that in the chat box and let's just um, engage with each other and just show each other that God really is there for us, right? Um, so without further ado, um, I've got the, uh, the, you know, the, the honor, the honor, I'll call it an honor because it is an honor, the honor of introducing our speaker for tonight. Um, uh, her name is Danae Van Royen, um, and Danae is a development consultant who loves to see God's good plans come to life in people's lives, in industries, and in the world. She believes that every aspect of life expresses God's creativity and wisdom, and that we are each uniquely positioned to walk in the good works um, God has prepared for us. She is passionate about development that truly benefits humanity. She is an enthusiast. She's an enthusiastic member of Powerhouse Prophetic Ministry, where she appreciates the opportunity to grow in faith, in community, and in the prophetic. She believes that gratitude gives us a godly perspective and makes room for God to move. So we welcome you here this evening, Danae. We are so expectant for what God has placed on your heart. And I just pray that even as you minister, that God continues to speak to you and that God may meet you at your point of need. So I just invite you to just release what the Lord has placed on your heart this evening. Um, over to you, Danae. Thank you so much, Shingi, and thanks to the Rooted team um, just for hosting the space um, and creating the space where we can um, just all get our hearts in a in a good space um, this evening and this week as well as we just kind of reprioritize gratitude in our lives. Um, it's such a special place to be tonight, so I'm really really grateful to be here. Um, yeah, let me just uh, open in a in a word of prayer. Although we have we have prayed a lot so far, but let me just open in a quick word of prayer um, before I get into it. Um, Lord Jesus, I just worship you and praise you this evening, Lord God, and I just thank you for your presence, uh, for your life changing presence, Lord God. Thank you for, ah, uh, yeah, Lord God, just the the honor, Lord, and the um the beauty of your presence oh god and the honor of getting to experience your presence lord i pray that tonight oh god your presence would just be with every person um in this room lord god with every person in their respective homes lord jesus i pray holy spirit just that um just for your nearness um oh god and i pray that in this evening you would just um remind us oh god who you are um and who who we are in relation to you I bless your name, Lord Jesus, and I pray that you'd guide my words, oh God, and um, yeah, that this would just be a time that is pleasing to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, awesome. Um, happy to happy to get started. I don't know how long this message is going to be. I don't know if it's going to meet the time requirements here. It, it might be a bit short. Um, I, I don't know exactly how, um, how long it's going to take me to go through what I have on my heart tonight, but um, hopefully it is, yeah, hopefully someone needs to stop me, just stop me. I think sometimes I can talk too much. Um, okay, great, um, everyone. So I think what I just What's on my heart this evening and what's been on my heart um, uh, just for the past few days in preparing for this message and preparing for this evening um, was actually an old hymn that many of us may know from Sunday school. Um, and the hymn goes, count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your many blessings see what the Lord has done. Um, some of you may remember this, this old hymn. Um, I think there's just something beautiful about going back to basics, you know, and going back to the simple things. Um, and it's funny how you, it's like, I haven't heard that song in years, you know, um, and it was just such a blessing to kind of go back to that. And I guess it puts on my heart tonight as we just kind of um, explore gratitude this week, um, and even just use this opportunity to express our gratitude to God. Um, I just wanted to reflect on something. Um, there's something about recounting the blessings of God. 
recounting the blessings of God. You know, the hymn speaks about, you know, count your blessings, name them one by one, count your blessings, see what God has done. But there's something really special that we see even throughout scripture, um, which is people recounting the blessings of God, you know, and it's almost like, you know, when we were kids, maybe we were singing the song about count your blessings. And it's like, okay, cool. Should I write a list? You know, what's the, the format here? But um, there's also something about as we grow older and as we even just evolve as people, let us recount our blessings, you know. So tonight, I just want to reflect a little bit on that and just talk about, you know, what it, yeah, just um, what it means to just recount our blessings, the blessings of God. Um so I want to just start um, this evening by reading from a psalm that I love um, and that kind of really represents this, uh, this uh, issue of, of uh, recounting the blessings of God. I'm going to be reading from the Passion Translation because uh, it just has such a uh, spice. Um, but I love the psalm in so many different versions. And I'm reading from Psalm 103. Psalm 103 um, recounts the blessings of God. It says, with my whole heart, with my whole life, and with my innermost being, I bow in wonder and love before you, the holy God. Yahweh, you are my soul's celebration. How could I ever forget the miracles of kindness you've done for me? You kissed my heart. Here he begins to count his blessings. You kissed my heart with forgiveness, despite all I've done. You've healed me inside and out from every disease. You've rescued me from hell and saved my life. You've crowned me with love and mercy. You satisfy my every desire with good things. You've supercharged my life so that I can soar again. I am flying like an eagle in the sky. You, you're a God who makes things right giving justice to the defenseless. You unveiled to Moses your plans and showed Israel's sons what you could do. Lord, you're so kind and tender-hearted and so patient with people who fail you. Your love is like a flooding river, overflowing its banks with kindness. You don't look at us only to find our faults, just so that you can hold a grudge against us. You may discipline us for our many sins, but never as much as we really deserve. Nor do you get even with us for what we've done. Higher than the highest heavens, that's how high your tender mercy extends. Greater than the grandeur of heaven above is the greatness of your loyal love, towering over all who fear you and bow down before you. Farther from the sunrise, from a sunrise to a sunset, that's how far you've removed our guilt from us. The same way a loving father feels towards his children, that's but a sample of your tender feelings towards us, your beloved children who live in all of you. You know all about us, inside and out. You are mindful that we're made of dust. Our days are so few and our momentary beauty so swiftly fades away. Then all of a sudden we are gone, like grass clippings blown away in a gust of wind taken away to our appointment with death, leaving nothing to show that we were here. But Lord, your endless love stretches from one eternity to the other, unbroken and unrelenting towards those who fear you and those who bow face down in awe before you. Your faithfulness to keep every gracious promise you've made passes from parents to children to grandchildren and beyond. You are faithful to all those who follow your ways and keep your word. Yahweh has established his throne in heaven. His kingdom rules the entire universe. So bless the Lord, all his messengers of power, for you are his mighty heroes who listen intently to the voice of his word to do it. Bless and praise the Lord, you mighty warriors, ministers who serve him well and fulfill his desires. I will bless and praise the Lord with my whole heart. Let all his works throughout the earth, wherever his dominion stretches, let everything bless the Lord. I love the psalm and I just wanted to read the whole thing because of just the, uh, 
the pattern that it gives us, right? The pattern that it shows us. And there's this pattern here of saying, God, these are all the things that you have done. God, these are all the things. This is who you are. There's this acknowledgement of what God has done. There's this acknowledgement of who God is. There's this acknowledgement of what God continues to do and will continue to do. And what all of this does is it spills over into praise. It spills over into this deep expression of gratitude. It spills over into this recounting, into I need to make this known, into I need to acknowledge this with my words. I need to acknowledge this in words, in writing. And what you can see, what I find beautiful about this um, and speaks to you know what I'm going to get into this evening is these words are standing the test of time. These words are, we're reading them today. It's thousands of years later, you know, and we are reading this recounting, King David's song of praise, his recounting of God's blessings. It has stood the test of time. It basically stands as, and I'll get into this tonight, a memorial. These words stand as a memorial of who God is and of what he has done, of what he has said. There's something here that I love um, that I'll touch on again later. Uh, there's a verse here that says, I believe it's verse, uh, let me get it from another version. <clears throat> verse seven, it says, he made known his ways to Moses and his acts to the people of Israel. In other words, there's something about God communicating what he's going to do and then doing it, right? There's something about us being able to tap into both the words of God as well as what God has done. Okay, I'll get into that in a minute. So um, this, this, uh, this, this psalm and recounting the blessings of God, recounting the things that the Lord has done, recounting who God is, cultivates gratitude, right? It cultivate, cultivates a gratitude for who God is. Um, gratitude thus becomes a means to remind ourselves or recounting these blessings is a means to remind ourselves of what God has done. In, and in that way, it stands as a memorial, right? And it is also a means um, to put faith again in what God will do. It builds up our faith again. There's this, there's this, this building up from recounting what God has done, remembering what he has done, spilling over into praise, it builds us up to once again, trust God again, hope in God again, believe God again, um, to dream again. I think that's something that I just want to touch on this evening, that we may dream again, that an attitude of, <laughs> an attitude of gratitude, I think it's impossible to, <laughs> to miss that rhyme, but um, it opens us up and opens our hearts up and positions our hearts and our minds again to dream again. So many in places and so many places in scripture, <clears throat> we see how the works of God are recounted. It's this psalm is just one example. You see so many times the people of God, uh, individuals and the Israelites recounting, reminding themselves of what the Lord has done. There's another example of this in Psalm 136, which I love. And I'm not going to read the whole thing this time, but Psalm 136 literally recounts the blessings of God from the beginning of time. And this is something you often see the Israelites doing as well as you work through the Old Testament and as you work through scripture. They start right at the beginning. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Uh, it says, to him who alone does great wonders, his steadfast love endures forever. To him by understanding, who, who by understanding made the heavens. His steadfast love endures forever. To him who spread out the earth above the waters, his steadfast love uh, endures forever, right from the beginning. Uh, to him who made the great lights, his steadfast love endures forever. The sun to rule over the day, his steadfast love rules forever, right back to the beginning of creation. It then goes on verse 10. To him, this is Psalm 136. To him who struck down the firstborn of Egypt, his steadfast love endures forever and brought Israel out from among them. His steadfast love endures forever. To him who divided the Red Sea in two, his steadfast love endures forever and made Israel pass through the midst of it. 
His steadfast love endures forever. He overthrew Pharaoh and his host in the Red Sea. Um, to him who led his people through the wilderness, to him who struck down great kings and killed mighty kings. And it literally goes through king by king, Sheho, king of the Amorites, Og, king of Bashan. He gave their land as a heritage, a heritage to Israel, his servants, his servant. And I've skipped all the times in between it saying his steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast love endures forever. So every single time the blessing of God is recounted in this particular psalm, it's followed by saying, this is the blessing and this is the steadfast love of God, which never fails. This is the blessing and this is the steadfast, this is the unchanging God who we serve. This is the blessing. This is who God remains to, to be today. This is the blessing. This is what God can continue to do. So there's this acknowledgement of this is what God has done. Um, this is what God has done. We're listing this from the beginning of time all the way through to what you are doing today. And we are recognizing God that you have not changed. We are recognizing God that the gratitude that we have for the things that you have done in, in times of old, in ages past, as the very same gratitude that we can have for who you are today, because you have not changed. So throughout, it literally recounts this from the, the beginning of time through the nation's history. And what I love is that um, the Israelites do this several times throughout the Old Testament. And I'm going to refer to one of those specific um, examples this evening. Um, throughout time, uh, throughout their journey, uh, there are these moments when they kind of stop and pause and they go back and they repeat this thing of, God, you brought us out of the land of Egypt. God, you told our forefathers that you told our forefathers there was a promised land. Then you brought us out of Egypt. Then you led us through the wilderness. Then you parted the Red Sea. It, literally, they recount this several times throughout the Old Testament. And one of the very significant times um, that I love about, about them doing this, about counting their blessings, recounting the blessings of the Lord, is this moment in Joshua chapter 3 and 4. It's this incredible time place in scripture and in the history of Israel where God literally does it again. You know, there's um, a, a, some of you may know Maxine Jafta. She's a great uh, friend of mine and also leads our powerhouse. And she loves to say, you know, that sharing our testimony, testimony is our way of saying, God, do it again. Right. And this is what you see the Israelites doing. They actually share their own people's testimony, their own history as a testimony of who God is, only to see God do it again. So I'm going to read a few pieces. I hope I read the right pieces here, but from Joshua chapter three and four, I'm just going to read loosely and kind of skip through some of these things um, because there's something specific that I just want to get to. Um, from more or less chapter three, verse nine, Joshua says to the people of Israel, come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. And Joshua said, here, here is how you shall know that the living God is among you and that he will without fail drive out from before you the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Hivites, the Perizzites, etc., etc. Behold, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord is passing before you into the Jordan. Now some context for where they are. The Israelites have just been through the desert for 80 years, right? They are now at this place where they are about to cross the Jordan, what stands between them and the, the promised land is the Jordan River, all right? They're finally here. Um, Moses has died. Moses has walked up a mountain and he has died and he has left the people in the care of Joshua. And Joshua is charged with leading the people into the promised land. So he consults with God and they have this moment where they're now basically standing they're standing at the threshold, right, between, between the desert and the promised land. And he says, listen to what the Lord your God has said. God said he's going to drive these nations out before you, and I'm about to show you a sign that he's going to do this. I love this. He then says, when the souls uh, take 12 men from the tribes of Israel, God gives them this instruction, and from the tribe, uh, and the, uh, each tribe a man. Um, and just to recognize the significance of this, once again, there's a body of water standing between the Israelites and their freedom, okay? Um, and between the Israelites and the promise of God. When the soles of the feet of the priests who are bearing the Ark of the Lord um, 
of all the earth rests in the waters of the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan shall be cut off from flowing and the waters coming down from above shall stand in one heap. I'm gonna keep going. As soon as those bearing the ark had come as far as the Jordan, the feet of the priests bearing the ark were dipped in the brink of the water. Now the Jordan overflows all its banks throughout the time of harvest. Side note, they were entering the promised land at the time of harvest. I just think that's amazing. Anyway, the waters coming down from above stood and rose up in a heap very far away the minute the priest's uh, feet touched the water. Um, uh, the, the waters were completely cut off and the people passed over opposite Jericho. Um, the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firmly on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan and all Israel was passing over the dry ground until all the nation finished passing over the Jordan. So what does God do in this moment? Not only did he part the Red Sea when the Israelites leave Egypt, he now does it again. He does it again. He parts another body of water as if, I mean, I just... I, I just am amazed by this. I'm like, God, as if like the very, and it's interesting because this generation weren't there for that. This generation did not experience the Red Sea parting. They did not witness the Red Sea parting. Joshua and Caleb did, but they're the only ones remaining. So the rest of the nation did not experience the Red Sea parting. That entire generation died off and there's a new generation, right? Um, coming out of the wilderness. And what God does for them is he parts the waters for them too. And what's interesting is that it's, it's in, the, 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 in the nation of Israel, these stories were being recounted. These blessings, the, the works of the Lord were being recounted. You know, it was this culture of, of narrative and of story and of uh, recounting what God has done so that people can remain in him, so that people can keep remembering the Lord, the Lord, their God, just as he, you know, instructed them to. And at this moment, this new generation who doesn't have the memory of that blessing of God, but they have the recounting of the blessing of God in their, in their lineage, they stand at this moment where a body of water is about to be parted for them as well. So this is something that's very significant, what happens here. Um, the, uh, he commands them, take 12 stones. Okay, let me, let me slow down because I, I just love this too much. He commands them, take 12 stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan. In other words, from the, from the Jordan rivers, the riverbed, right? That they walk through on dry ground. Take 12 stones from the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly and bring them over with you and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the 12 men from the people of Israel whom he had appointed, a man from each tribe. Joshua said to them, pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. This is verse six uh, of chapter four that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. The people of Israel did just as they were as they were told. And Joshua set up, verse 9, the 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood. And according to this verse, it says, and they are there to this day. I just want to carry on towards the end uh, from verse uh, 21. Uh, verse 20, and those 12 stones, which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal. And he said to the people of Israel, when your children and their fathers in times to come, ask in times to ask their fathers, sorry, in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know. 
Israel passed over the jo this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, just as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. God did it again. And what happened in this moment is that God said, take something from literally from what would have been under the water and take these 12 stones and the, there's one for each tribe. So there's, there's a memory for each tribe as well. Set up these 12 stones on the other side of the riverbank, stack them on top of each other, basically build an altar, build a memorial that literally recounts what God has done in this place, that is evidence of what God has done in this place, and that is something that stands in your life as a memory, as a memorial that you can speak of generation to generation, and also for yourselves, There's, a, there's this moment that basically what they can do as, they, as they've passed through this, they thank the Lord for what he has done, right? You are, we're, they're grateful for God bringing them through the Red Sea. They're grateful for God bringing them through the Jordan. And they set up this memorial as a, as a testament to that, right? As a testimony to that. Um, gratitude is effectively when we recount the blessings of the Lord and when we, uh, when we express gratitude, um, we are testifying to ourselves. Yes, we're testifying to others and that's critical and that's important. And, and you know, there's this generational work of saying, you know, this is what the Lord has done for me. This is what the Lord has done for my, my fathers and my forefathers, et cetera, et cetera. That is a generational work. But even in our own lives, our own gratitude it's like testifying to ourselves. So I want to encourage us this evening, and what I've also just been challenged to do in my own life, because in Joshua 3 and 4, we did we see God doing for Joshua what he did for Moses. Right? And so um, we get to we get to also testify to ourselves, right? And there's a there's a verse in, in the book of Revelation where it speaks of it says that the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. That's the that's the the, the scriptural reference for this um this saying, you know, that when we speak of what God has done, when we testify, when we share our testimony, we are saying to God, do it again, you know. Um so um we thank God for what he has done right in building this memorial and in so doing we also there's this moment where we stand in gratitude that is standing between what God has done and standing standing between what God has done and what God is still going to do that's a moment of gratitude right um I wanted to speak about the fact that that gratitude is a retrospective act where we look back and we recount and we see what God has done. And at the same time, it's a prospective act. It's a prophetic act where we say, God, you have done this. God, you can do that, right? God, you have done what you said. And God, you will do what, you've, what you have continued, what you still say, you know. Um, there's this uh, verse that I love, uh, Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Let me just get it properly, where the Lord says, oh gosh, now this thing is giving me problems. Okay, uh, Isaiah 42, verse 9, the Lord says, Behold, the former things have come to pass, and now I will tell you of the things, of the things to come. Let me just get the proper verse for you. The scripture has really been on my heart this year. Um, sorry, guys, technology is, is giving me a challenge. Um, Isaiah 42, verse 9, the Lord says, 
Behold, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. There's something that I just want to pause and say when to say here. And, and I think this is just, I mean, maybe just to testify, this, this scripture really hit home for me this year because of some of the things that God said he would do and they have had done, they have been done, <laughs> right? So I, I sat at the beginning of this year looking at this and saying, oh my word, Lord, like the you have said these and these things would happen. You have done them. So I can stand at this point and then the Lord says, those former things have come to pass. He says, now I'm declaring new things. Before they spring forth, I'm telling you of them. So what does this speak about? This speaks about the fact that there was a moment previously in time where God declared something. Those former things have come to pass. Now we stand at this moment of gratitude, reflecting on the things that God has done, recounting the things that God has done, um, counting our blessings. And God is saying, guess what? I'm speaking of more things to come. I'm speaking of the things that I'm yet to do. So in this moment of gratitude, why I say that it's a re retrospective act, it's also a prospective act because we can effectively thank the Lord in advance for the things that he is yet to do. We can stand in this moment, and this is why it, gratitude is this moment, but it's also timeless, right? It's almost like there's a continuum of gratitude that we get to live in to say, the very things that God said he would do have come to pass. Now there are new things that the Lord is saying he will do, or there are new things that I am facing. And we're saying, he is telling us of them before so that we can even thank him before. There's this old song of Marvin Sapp's that I just love called Praise Him in Advance, you know, where he talks about, you know, the others. <laughs> I love how he starts this song. Some praisers are conditional praisers. You know, they're not willing to praise God until they've seen uh, what has happened. But let's be people who praise him in advance. He speaks about, you know, I have these things that are going on. I have these things that are troubling me. Um, and and people are laughing at me and people are, are you know, are wondering what's going to happen. But I have chosen, God says to him, praise will confuse the enemy, you know. So he will praise him in advance for the things that he is going to do. Like I said, gratitude spills over into praise. Gratitude spills over into praise. So in this moment of gratitude, we get to recount, just as so many of the Psalms do, recount the blessings of the Lord and stand in this moment to say, Lord, this is what I'm also hoping for. Lord, this is what I'm still praying for. Cool. I'm just conscious of time, so I'm going to wind down. This is what I want to say. We get to thank God for what he has done, and we get to thank God for what he will yet do, because he is a faithful God. He has remained true to the things that he said would come to pass, and therefore he will remain true to the things that he is now speaking, to the things that he is now declaring. Um, we stand between what God has done and what he will do. We stand, gratitude is both an act of faith and it is a prophetic act. Gratitude is a memorial for the ages. It is a memorial for our lives, a memorial for the ages. So in closing, what I just want to encourage us, us to do is to recount the blessings of the Lord, to count, literally count your blessings. Start at the top, go as far back as you can, you know, in recounting the blessings of the Lord. Go as far back as you can remember, name them one by one, name them one by one. Not only will you see what God has done, as the old hymn says, but you will be reminded of what he said he will do. You will be reminded so that you can thank him in advance, so that you can praise him in advance, knowing that he, his steadfast love endures forever. His steadfast faithful character endures forever, as we read in Psalm 136. So um, that's my message <laughs> this evening on gratitude. Um, yeah, that we, may, that we may see it as a memorial um, to the things that God has done and to the things that he will do again. Um, yeah, be blessed. I hope that is, <laughs> that's been encouraging this evening. I hope I didn't take too long as well. <laughs>
Amen. Amen. Not at all. Not at all. We were still uh, taking in what you're saying. So we, we're ready. We're ready for you. But thank you so much, Danae. Thank you so much for such a powerful word, so for such a word in season, I think. Um, just reminding us to just recount the blessings that God has bestowed upon us. Uh, we really appreciate you and we thank you so much. And just as we uh, move on to a time of worship, you know, um, I think Danae was just encouraging us to recount what God has done for us, right? And what better way to do that than as we soak in the presence of God, as we just worship unto him and and, and and just remember um, who he is and what he's done for us. So um, I don't know, I think Pelo or Sean, I don't know if you guys are ready for us um, just to, 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 to lead us in a time of worship and, and just recount what God has done for you and I here this evening.
Amen and amen. Uh, thank you for, for, for thank you for that, uh, Pelo. Um, and thank you, thank you again, uh, Dene, for such a sober words, for such a word and season. Um, I just want to open up the floor. Uh, perhaps maybe there's somebody with a word for us, just as we were worshiping and as you we were listening to the word. Um, you know, a word uh, that you want to speak, a word of encouragement, um, or anything that God has placed on your heart. You can just unmute your mic and uh, and share. All right, going once. Going twice. Singy, can I add one? Can I say one thing that I just? <laughs> I know I'm the one who was doing the speaking. No, go. Hey, go for it. <laughs> um, I think just one of the things that's just on my heart is is also just even as we're speaking about gratitude, I think um, a lot of times it's difficult to go back and even look at some of the things that God has done without kind of noticing some of the things that maybe we we've been disappointed by. And I guess my encouragement just this evening is that, you know, as we as we uh, we press into gratitude and as we press into recounting the blessings of the Lord, we can also allow the Holy Spirit to to really reshape our perspective and to help and give us understanding and healing for some of the disappointments that we've experienced. And we can bring those things very openly and very honestly before God. You see David doing that very, you know, many times in the Psalms. He's very honest. Um, and really just to take that moment to say, you know what? Um, these are some of the things that I'm disappointed by. Let me lay these down. And God, as I thank you for the things that you have done, heal me and, and give me perspective of the things that I feel like maybe you didn't do, you know, um, just to not shy away from that because God certainly is not afraid of that. So yeah, just wanted to share. Um, thank you for that, Danae. You know, just just before you shared that, I was, uh, you know, as we were worshiping, you know, I was also recounting some of those perhaps disappointments, you know, and I was like, you're okay. Uh, but, but thank you for that encouragement to just allow the Holy Spirit to just, you know, um, deal with some of those things. So thank you so much. Um, I see there's a hand from Pearl. Um, go for it, Pearl. Good evening, everyone. Um, I just want to say to Danae that thank you for sharing this word. I've always loved um, Psalm 103, and I really love the idea of going back, like way, way back, and actually writing down things um, that God has done for us. And I just feel really encouraged and inspired, um, even in the season that I'm in, to just write down um, the things that God has done for me. So, yeah, I just wanted to say thank you. It was just so encouraging and just a fresh perspective um, on gratitude. Amen. Amen. Thank you for that, Pearl. Um, definitely, definitely so encouraged as well. Um, so if there's nobody else who would like to share, I think I, I, I think for me, you know, many a times, you know, you listen to um, to a word and and it's very hard to um, to take it and make it yours and see how it applies to you. But I but but, but I think as I was listening to today uh, shared this evening. Um, you know, it was very, it was a very practical word, and I think um, I speak for everyone but to say that it was a very practical word, and it allows us to actually go back and, 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 and do those recounting 
um, things and then think about it and see what God has done for us and write it down and begin to thank him and begin to set those memorials to, 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 to set and see where God has taken us from and taken us to. So, so I think for me, it's, it's, it's a very practical word and just my encouragement to everybody here, you know, let's, you know, uh, even the Bible tells us, let's not only be hearers, right, but let's be doers of the word, right? And so just coming out of this, uh, this meeting, let's just go back and, and do the work and, and, and really think back. Uh, many a times it's, it's, it's actually not that difficult, you know, because um, there are things that we continually pray for and God has come through for us in so many magnificent ways. And at times, you know, I think um, yesterday, uh, Mabel shared on, on, on the 10 lepers that, uh, uh, that were healed and only one came back, right? And, um, and, and God was like, how, but did I not heal 10 of you guys? Where are the other nine? And sometimes we're like the other nine, right? We just, you know, we, we're praying for something, we are expecting for something. And maybe because we've been praying so long for that thing, when it happens, we are perhaps so excited. We are so, uh, you know, finished that we forget to go back and thank God, but let's just, you know, go back and do the work and think and then recount some of those things that God has done for us. Um, um, so, so yeah, just uh, before we close, I'd just like, uh, I'd just like to ask Danae to just, you know, uh, give us a closing prayer as we, as, as, as we close here this evening. Sure. Um, yeah, let's pray. God, I just want to thank you. Um, you know, Lord, you say in your word that, you know, the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance on the things that you have said, Jesus. And I just pray for us in this week um, and in our lives that the Holy Spirit would also bring to our remembrance um, all the things that you have done, um, the things that you have said and all the things that you have done. I pray, God, just that in this week, you would um, open our eyes and open our hearts to, to be able to recount blessings that we didn't even know um, were there, to recount some of the things that you have done that we may have even forgotten about, Lord God. And I pray that these things would really just take root in our hearts, Lord Jesus, and that we may, um, yeah, that we may just grow from this. Um, I pray for a renewed sense of faith, um, a renewed sense of hope, Lord God. I pray for those of us who really need to stretch out and dream in this season, Lord God, that um, even just this exercise would help us to do that, Lord Jesus. You are good and you are kind and you are faithful God and um, just thank you Lord for for tonight and thank you uh, for your presence um, that is with us at all 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 times I pray a blessing of everyone in this room Lord Jesus and um, yeah Lord God that uh, yeah just that you would remind us of all the good things um, that you have done for us and in us in Jesus name amen Amen and amen. Thank you. Thank you so much again, Danae. Uh, thank you for refreshing us, for refreshing our souls. And just as you've refreshed us, I just pray that God refreshes you and, and you know, does a new thing in your um, in your life. I think you spoke on uh, Isaiah 43, 18. May God, may that scripture, you know, become manifest in your life. Um, so thank you so much, everybody. Um, just to, I just want to extend an invite just before we, we go to an, an invite to anybody. Um, I know Rooted has a WhatsApp group. So if you'd like to join the WhatsApp group, I think you can just DM the Rooted team on Instagram. I think Tuto is here, Shah is here, Omo is here. You can just uh, speak to, 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 to one of them and then they'll add you to the group. But thank you, thank you, thank you so much, so much guys for coming through. We meet again tomorrow evening, same time, nine o'clock, um, as we just continue, continue just soaking in the presence of God, soaking in what God is doing in this season and just being grateful. Um, so thank you so much, guys. Have a blessed evening um, and may God continue to cover you guys. Cheers, guys. Amen. Good night. Thank you, everyone.